we can use a paired t-test when we are interested in comparing the means of two related samples, such as a before and after scenario. In a paired t-test, the two measurements are dependent in some way. For example, say you collected heart rate measurements from athletes before and after they ran a marathon. In this example, the before and after heart rate measurements are considered dependent because they are taken on the same individual. This spreadsheet shows data from an experiment to test how often people blinked while performing two different tasks. The subjects were asked to carry out a simple task and their blinking frequency was recorded in the simple column. The subjects were also asked to carry out a more difficult task and their blinking frequency was recorded in the difficult column. We want to investigate the relationship between blink frequency and the difficulty of the task being performed. Does the ease or difficulty of a task change how frequently people blink? To find this out, we're going to perform a paired t-test to compare the mean values of the blinking rates for the simple and difficult tasks. The test will tell us whether there is a statistically significant difference between the two means. Our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the two means. People will blink at the same rate regardless of the difficulty or ease of a task. If the null hypothesis is true, we would expect the mean value in the simple column to be very similar to the mean value in the difficult column. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in the means. People change how frequently they blink depending on the ease or difficulty of a task. If the alternative hypothesis is true, we would expect to see a large difference in the mean values of the two columns. To use a paired t-test, we make the following assumptions. The samples are dependent. The paired samples are randomly and independently drawn from the population. The difference between pairs of measurements is approximately normally distributed, that is, there are no outliers amongst the differences. The difference between pairs of measurements is continuous. The paired t-test is fairly robust to non-normality, but if the differences between pairs of measurements are severely non-normal, you should use the Wilcoxon matched pairs test. We'll demonstrate this test later on in the video. First, we'll load our spreadsheet. Select File, Open Example Data Sets. Type blink.gsh. Now double click Blink to load this data set. The spreadsheet has three columns of data. The first column, Subject, contains an ID number for each of the 12 people in the study. Their results, the blink rates for simple and difficult tasks, are stored in the next two columns. Before we run our t-test, let's display the data as a box plot. This lets us explore the data visually. For example, we can compare the distribution of blink rates between the two tasks and check for outliers. From the menu, select Graphics, Box Plot. Select the two variates you want to plot, Difficult and Simple, then move them into the Data Variates field. We don't have any grouping variates, so ignore these options and click Run. Here we have the box plot for our difficult sample, and here's the box plot for the simple sample. These green crosses represent outliers in our data. The horizontal bar drawn across each box plot indicates the median value for the sample. If we draw horizontal lines from the median to the y-axis, you can see that the median blinking rate for the difficult task is quite a bit less than that for the simple task. This suggests that blinking rate is affected by the ease or difficulty of a task. A shortcoming of this plot is that it doesn't account for the pairing of measurements from same subjects. So instead, 
For each subject, let's calculate the difference between their simple and difficult task blink rate. We'll then draw a box plot of these differences. To calculate the difference, from the menu, select Data, Calculations. We need to enter the calculation we wish to make into this expression field. Let's calculate the blink rate of the simple task minus the blink rate of the difficult task. We'll save the result in a variable called Difference. Clicking Run will add a new column to our spreadsheet named Difference. Now let's create a box plot of these differences. From the menu, select Graphics, Box Plot. Move the variate you want to plot, Difference, into the Data Variates field and click Run. In this box plot, the differences range between approximately 4 and 13. What this shows us is that every person in the study had a higher blink rate when performing the simple task than they did during the difficult task. Let's now turn our attention to the t-test. The box plots have showed us that there is a large difference in our sample medians, but the t-test will tell us if there is a statistically significant difference in the population means. From the menu, select Stats, Statistical Tests, 1 and 2 sample t-tests. Select Paired Samples as the test type because each person's blink rate for the simple task is being compared with their blink rate for the difficult task. Double-click Simple to move this to the Data Variate 1 field. Double-click Difficult to move this to the Data Variate 2 field. The order that you select the samples isn't important. You need to select a two-sided test, also called a two-tailed test, because you only want to know if there is a difference in the mean values. You would use a one-sided test if you wanted to test if the mean of variate 1 was higher or lower than variate 2. Leave all other settings at their defaults, then click Run. The difference between the sample means is 7.5, but is this evidence of a true difference or merely a result of chance? The t-statistic is 9.74 on 11 degrees of freedom. The corresponding p-value is less than 1 in 1,000. This means that there is less than a 1 in 1,000 chance of observing a difference as large or larger than 7.5 in this study if the null hypothesis were true. Therefore, when the p-value is small, which it is, we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. That is, we can conclude that how frequently a person blinks is affected by the ease or difficulty of the task they are performing. On average, the blinking rate is 7.5 higher for the simple task compared to the difficult task, and the 95% confidence interval for the difference is 5.8 to 9.2. You may be wondering why our output is headed one sample t-test. This is because a paired t-test is actually a one sample t-test of differences. Let's demonstrate this. When performing a paired t-test, the first step is to calculate the difference between each pair of measurements. The second step is to use a one sample t-test to compare the mean difference to zero. That is, our null hypothesis is that the mean difference is zero. And our alternative hypothesis is that the mean difference is not equal to zero. To analyze the differences using a one sample t-test, from the menu, select Stats, Statistical Tests, one and two sample t-tests. Select one sample as the test type and difference as the variate to analyze. The mean for the null hypothesis is specified in the test mean field. In our example, 
the null hypothesis is that the mean difference is zero. Select a two-sided test because you're interested in testing the two-sided alternative that the mean difference is not equal to zero. Click Run. The output is essentially the same as for the paired t-test, the only change being that simple minus difficult has been replaced by difference. So the paired t-test is just a special case of the one sample t-test. However, it has its own name because pairing is so frequently used in experiments. As mentioned earlier, an assumption of the paired t-test is that the differences between the pairs of observations is approximately normally distributed. However, if the differences are severely non-normal, you can use the Wilcoxon matched pairs test, also called the Wilcoxon signed ranks test. This test is a non-parametric alternative to the paired t-test that assesses the null hypothesis that the median difference between the pairs of observations is zero. We'll perform a Wilcoxon test on the blink data, even though the differences look fairly normally distributed, albeit slightly skewed to the right. Departures from normality have to be quite severe to make the paired t-test inappropriate. From the menu, select Stats, Statistical Tests, Two sample non-parametric tests. Select Wilcoxon matched pairs test as the test type. Set the data arrangement to two variates because the blink rates for the simple and difficult tasks are in two separate columns. Double click simple to move this to the data variate one field. Double click difficult to move this to the data variate two field. The order that you select the samples isn't important. Click Run. The test statistic is zero. This is because for each pair of observations, the blinking rate was always higher for the simple task. The p-value for the Wilcoxon test is less than 0.001. With a p-value this small, we can conclude that median blink rate is affected by the ease or difficulty of the task.